In this video, I'm going to teach you two basic techniques in Photoshop to tint windows on a car and get you started on your digital art journey. Tinting windows in Photoshop can be as easy as this first method I'm going to show you, which is to create a new layer, grab your brush tool and black as a color, and then just begin to paint over the windows that are facing closest to you in the picture. Now this technique is perfect for the hobbyist because it's quick and it's effective and it gives you a general idea of what window tint would look like on your car. You just change the opacity of the layer and you're done. You can see within less than, less than 60 seconds, we're done. Now for the aspiring professional designer, I think that there's a little bit better way that we can do this because we have to remember that in real life, tint on windows is dimensional. So when you look at a car, that has window tint, you're not just seeing the tint that is on the windows closest to you, but you're seeing the layering effect of the tint on the windows in the back of the car, on the other side of the car, and the windows that are facing closest to you. So the technique I'm gonna show you here takes just a little bit longer, but it, it utilizes shapes, layers, and blend modes to create a more dimensional look that to me looks more true to real life. So the first thing I'm gonna do here with this technique is I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm gonna begin to just mark out the shape of the window it takes just a little bit more time than brushing it on with the brush. But what I like about this technique is that you get the precise lines of where the tint is on the window, which is exactly what you would get in real life. And now we've got all of our shapes marked out, just like we're tinting the windows in real life. Now what we wanna do, I'm gonna start on the back side of the car. So on that driver's side window, I'm gonna change the color of the tint layer, the shape, to a color that more matches the darkest color on the inside of the car. It's got a blue tint to it because you're getting the reflection of the sky in the windshield and it's casting that on the inside of the car. So what we wanna do is we wanna match that color on that shape layer and it's easy because we made it a vector shape. You just double click on the layer, it'll open up the color palette then you use your eyedropper tool, which automatically pops up when any time you move off of the color picker and you can eye drop any color on the entire photo. And let's go ahead and do the same thing on the rear windows. Now we're gonna come back up to our front driver's side window. You can change the opacity here and it begins to take on a really nice tint. But the magic can happen when we use a blending mode. So if I open up the blending mode for that layer, right now it's set to normal. If we simply drop that down, move it to a soft light blending mode, it automatically takes on a very, very nice tint. This is one of the other reasons I've, I chose this photo because there's a lot of noise in the background of this photo. I want you to see how we can effectively capture the noise and make this all look like it was like this in the first place. So the next part of this technique that I usually do is I will create a new layer now on top of the layer that I just did the blend mode. And then I'm gonna clip that layer to the layer below it. Now in that top layer, the layer that I just created, all I'm gonna do is I am going to make those colors match. I'm gonna create a slight gradient because there is a gradation of blues in there. So I'm gonna take the darkest blue and I'm gonna paint that near the bottom. I'm gonna take a little bit of light blue and I'm gonna paint that around the top. And this is all to your discretion as the artist. You wanna just make the tint look like it actually belongs on the car. And now all you have to do is repeat these steps for the other shape elements on the windows. And you'll see that we get a very cohesive look to the window tint. So clearly the second technique is geared more towards graphic professionals to get a look that looks photorealistic versus the first technique, which is more so if you just wanna see very, very quickly what tint might look like on your car. Both of these techniques work equally as well, just depending on the level of detail that you want in your final product. 